What is going on guys? D1 here, back from a very long break from tutorials. Uh, today I thought I'd bring you guys something a little bit different from what I usually do. Normally I would do logic Python tutorials. Uh, here I want to teach you guys a little graphics effect, which I thought might be nice uh, for those of you who want to have a better looking game. Uh, so uh, just before I go over anything else, uh, the reason why I didn't make tutorials is because I couldn't find the time between university and other responsibilities. Uh, but hopefully I'll be able to make a few, uh, upload a few uh, soon. Uh, so watch out for that. Um, now to the tutorial. The effect that I'm going to teach you how to do is a GLSL effect. So you have to have a GLSL compatible computer. Uh, now if you don't know what GLSL is, it's a more advanced rendering uh, system. Uh, how you go about activating it is if you if you're on Blender game you shouldn't be on render if you're working on the game engine you should be on Blender game of course you can see here there's single texture and you can see how my staff looks from single texture uh, there's multi texture right which isn't really that different from single texture the difference is you can support multiple textures on uh, an object hence multi texture and then there's GLSL which allows for other effects. So you can see here that there's a, you know, there's spec, there's a sh better shading, higher quality shading. It's basically a better, more accurate uh, graphic system. Uh, by the way, uh, just as a note, you notice here that my shading is a little bit blue. Uh, what I've done here is I have a, I don't even know how, how to say this, hemi, hemi, I don't know. I have it set to blue, and it's a very, like, it's 0.5 basically and then there's a sun for the proper lighting uh, just to give it that sort of uh, it, it's it's a much better feel but let's get back to GLSL before we get off track here uh, back to GLSL I have a normal object a staff here a cartoon staff uh, I have a subsurface modifier on it just to make it look less jagged obviously for a game it's gonna be uh, you, you want it to be not too detailed right but if you add a subsurface modifier, then it's a lot more detailed. Anyways, I'll keep it at this. Uh, what we're going to worry about is the nodes here. Uh, now, if you look at the material, uh, the material is a normal material, just an object that you add a texture to. Nothing special. No no tricks in here or anything like that. No, no settings, special settings. Uh, what we are going to do, though, uh, is I want to go to the node editor, and that's where all the magic's going to happen. Uh, now where I learned this effect myself is there's a game called Blender Mario Galaxy. It's a, basically a Mario Galaxy uh, clone uh, that was made on Blender. You can look it up. It's, it's a very nice demo. Uh, very accurate and very nice actually. So I looked at their files, snooped around and saw some of their node setups. It's actually made by a guy. Uh, I'll link the video uh, in the description. I looked at his node setup and I learned this effect from him. Now here's what's gonna happen when you open the node editor uh, you should have nothing here I have to because I've done this before but you should have nothing here it should be empty uh, if you scroll over here you wanna click use nodes now these are gonna appear the material box and the output box uh, now there should be it should be black it should turn your object black as well and of course you want to have GLSL on uh, for this to be visible it should turn your object black and that's because the node is now essentially cover like overriding the material uh, by default there would be nothing here it wouldn't be set to anything so you want it to be set to the material of your object and then the texture is going to appear uh, now what you notice here is a color connected to another color on the output uh, this is basically the basic material uh, and this is the output the sort of the end of the line for the node setup and nodes are set up similar to logic bricks how you connect you know these uh, these dots to each other now what we're going to do to achieve this effect is add a converter color ramp so we want to have a color ramp we want to add a color mixer and we want to add a vector normal now these three things I'll tell you what each one is going to do in this case whoops uh, there's the mix here well let's start with the normal the normal is going to be let's not do that there we go so the normal is going to decide where the effect is going to appear. Basically, it's going to be this glow on the edges. And depending on how you rotate the normal, it's going to change the effect uh, where, where it's actually placed. right? Uh, the color ramp is actually going to decide on the color of the effect right? and how intense it's going to be, how much of a fade there's going to be. Uh, right? And it, you might even invert it. 
depending on where you flip the white to or whatever color you set this to right so uh, and the color mix is sort of the the step before the end before the output and what it's going to do is it's going to combine the material which is going to be connected here with the effect that the normal and the color ramp are going to produce uh, so what it's going to do is it's going to take both and mix them and then produce the output so let's start with the setup uh, you can see how I connected it there by just putting it in there. You just want to have this color connected to the color 1 and then the, the mix color on the right connected to the output color. Let me take this off. Uh, now what is happening here, you can see that it's sort of faded and that's because the second color by default is set to this sort of grayish uh, color. So you can see here if I move it around I get this sort of tint, right? Uh, I don't know, something that could be useful, although you can see it's not the best looking thing. Uh, it doesn't matter, though. it doesn't matter what color this is set to. What we're going to do next is get the material, connect the normal on the right, not on the left, on the right, connect it to the left of the normal box. And then we want to take the dot on the normal box and connect it to the factor here on the color ramp. Uh, and then we'll take the color ramp color and connect it to the color slot too. And now you can see we have an effect here, right? This is the start of it. Now the glow is at the center, or the white here is at the center. We don't want, we don't want it to be at the center, we want it to be in the edges. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to flip this so it inverts the effect. And you can, see, you can already see the effect now, right? It's a nice lighting effect here. Uh, it can make your game look very nice if you can use it well. Now like all graphics effects, I wouldn't recommend that you uh, overuse this. Uh, because obviously it's going to take up a lot of processing and it's, it's going to slow you down. Uh, and depending on your graphics card, you might not be able to handle too many objects with this. But what you can do is if you click on the white side here, uh, not sure why I can't click on the black anymore. Before, if you remember, it was black. Uh, but the point is click on towards the white here, and you should be able to change the color. So something yellow, because this is a brown uh, piece of wood, obviously. Whoops, wow. Yeah, that, that's not what I wanted, but you can see how uh, the colors have an effect now on the glow. Let's set it back to uh, brown. And I'm having a major lag here for whatever reason. I'm not even sure why. Okay, let's drag this. Oh, I see. Okay, you see that? So you have three areas where you can change the color. So over here, I'm going to drag this. Right, and you can see now there's a fade to it, as you can see. So you can have multiple colors. I actually just learned this right on the spot. So I have a bit of red, then the yellow, the brownish stuff, and then the actual texture. So that's something nice. Uh, so I'm going to set this to sort of yellow. And here it's a little bit darker, and we have a nice glow here. And rotating the normal is going to have an effect on where it appears from. So I can have it, the dark area represents uh, the bottom. Remember, it's inverted, right? Uh, so represents the bottom, or you can sort of drag it to angle it, depending on where, where your sun's going to be or your dominant light source. So that's a nice effect that I thought uh, I might want to share. Uh, I, I think it's awesome. So if 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 you enjoyed this tutorial, uh, like, subscribe. Uh, I'm going to be uploading more soon, hopefully. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching, and see you guys next. Time.